Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be testing out the Infrared P2 Pro Thermal Imaging Camera. We're going to be going over why I wanted one of these, what I'm going to be using it for, and things that you might want to use it for or might have interest in. And if you're interested in picking one of these up after watching this video, I'll leave links down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick one up on Amazon. As a disclaimer, they did send this to me for testing, but when they reached out to me, I was like, absolutely, I will definitely like to check that out because I've always wanted one for different things around the house. The first being that when I'm reviewing e-bikes, if you guys watch my channel, you know that every once in a while I'll get one that will limit the power of the bike after riding it really hard. I can use this when that happens and see how hot the controller is, how hot the motor is, see if the wiring's hot, but there's a ton of other things I would love to use this thing for too. I've been playing around with this for about a week now and I gotta tell you, it's really amazing what this little thing can do. So look how small this little camera is. It's one of the world's smallest thermal imaging camera and it works really well. Now this is the iOS version. It plugs directly into a cell phone and you use the screen of your phone to view the images. Now this has an IR resolution of 256 by 192 and it's pretty good compared to a lot of other thermal cameras out there. And what's awesome about this little one is it has a 25 hertz frame rate so as you're videoing stuff or trying to get an accurate temperature of stuff and you're moving your phone around it doesn't jump it's actually pretty fluid. However, I did notice every once in a while it will freeze up for a second or two and then come back on. So it's not 100% steady flow. And I don't know if that had something to do with the app or my phone, but you might be able to see that in some of these clips that I show you. So here you can see I used it on my e-bike when I went for a quick ride just to see how hot the motor was. And you could see it was somewhere up in around 105 degrees or so. So now the way that this thing works, when you have it on just regular mode and you plug this thing into your camera, download the app, really easy to use and that's one prop I have to give this company is when you download the app you don't have to make an account you don't have to log in you don't have to give access to a bunch of different things you just download the app plug it in and this camera works so a plus for that you don't have to input any information like your email or anything so that's awesome there is no internal battery in this which is awesome it runs off the battery in your cell phone and it only uses like 0.33 watts so it will last a ton of hours on just the battery of your cell phone. You don't have to worry about the battery in this little thing going bad. You don't have to ever worry about having to replace that battery because it's not gonna go bad because it doesn't have one. Now this version does come with a little macro lens that magnetizes right onto there and it gives you a little lens cap cover for that macro lens, which is really nice. Now this is gonna be used for really, really up close, like that far away, trying to diagnose a circuit board, trying to diagnose hot capacitors, relays, things like that. Now I did put this macro lens on and was playing around trying to see how close I can get to my son's eye. And you could see here when I got really close, his eyelashes were getting really, really in focus. And then as I backed up just slightly, they were getting out of focus, but I was really, really close there. So that macro lens works pretty well. If you can buy it without the macro lens, I think it's about $50 cheaper currently without this. And you can always purchase this later on if you need it. Me, I'm probably not gonna use this because I don't really repair circuit boards much, but I am gonna use this thing a ton around the house, especially when it gets colder in the winter to check out cold spots or hot spots in my house to see where I need to insulate a little bit more. Now I did test this out in my basement and what I found out that was really cool was you could see here on this clip that the floor joists and the band board that runs around my addition, I didn't expect this. It was pretty hot, which I figured it would be. And in the winter, it's really cold because I need to insulate that yet. But right in the center, there was a spot that wasn't nowhere near as hot as the two ends. And right on the outside of that wall, I have a mini split out there and it constantly has a fan blowing. So it was keeping that wall cool on my house, which shows right here where there's a gap between the two red spots. So I thought that was pretty awesome to see. But when it's really cold out, I'm gonna be able to go and see where all the cold spots are and where the cold is coming in, which I think is gonna be pretty cool and gonna help me with efficiency if I can get those areas insulated. Another awesome thing about this little guy is in pitch dark when you're outside, you could see animals running through your yard. Now I didn't have any animals outside to try this on. I had some cats inside that I was playing around with and my wife wanted to actually see how the heating pad in our lizard tank was working and how it was dissipating the heat. So I checked that out for her and you could see in this clip where the lizard was really, really cold compared to the rest of the environment around there. And you could see on the bottom, the heating pad where it was radiating the heat. So that was pretty neat to see. 
But I'm gonna have my son run through the yard here in pitch dark and we're gonna see how good this thing picks him up coming through the yard. And it's not quite night vision, but you could use it to see at night if you really wanted to. Now there are 11 different modes that you can put this on for different color palettes or temperature displays. Pretty awesome. I took it to work and we were using a Sawzall to cut off a bracket. And you could see here when we started cutting, it was sensing that the temperature of the wheel was the hottest, probably because the brakes were applied right before that. And once we started cutting with the Sawzall, you could see the blade heating up and it'll tell you the temperature of the blade. And then I'm gonna go ahead and scroll through all the different color palettes here so you can see the differences in how things are displayed. You have a black hot, a white hot, a red hot, and rainbow colored and multiple different options to choose from. I did notice when you use the white hot, it is a little bit hard to see the temperature reading. So I prefer to use black hot or red hot and it's a little bit easier to see. Those are my two favorites, but really cool to see. And the way this thing works is in the center of the frame that you're shooting, it shows you one point and it shows you a temperature and whatever you have that pointed at, that will be the temperature of that spot. But then in that frame, it also shows you the coldest point in that frame and the hottest point in that frame. So I was testing this out in my kitchen the other day when my mother-in-law and my wife were drinking coffee and tea. When I was pointing it at my wife, I thought her teacup would be the hottest, but actually it was the tea kettle sitting over the other side of the room on the counter. And then once I angled it towards her, the coldest spot was actually on the table. It was about 50 some degrees. My son was drinking an ice cold drink with some ice in it. So it was sensing that as the coldest spot. And then it was sensing her tea as the hottest spot. So pretty awesome that it picks up the hottest spot, the coldest spot, and it also gives you that spot in the center. Now they make two different versions of this. They make the iOS version and they make the Android version. So if you have an Android phone, make sure you get that version with the USB-C. And if you have an iOS version with a lightning connector, make sure you get that version. Now they state that this works with iPhone or iPad. However, my iPad is the iPad Pro with the USB-C connector. It will not work with that. It may work if I get an adapter. I haven't tried it yet, but I might get one just to try it. But if you're using it with your cell phone that has a lightning connector, you'll want this one. And like I said, Android, the other one. Now for this thing to work, it's pretty easy. You just plug it directly into your phone. No batteries at all. It runs off the battery of your phone. You open up the Thermal P2 app. The camera comes on. I just put it on red hot and you could see that it's sensing that my camera that I'm filming this with is the hottest thing in the frame currently. Pretty cool pretty neat to see. So what's awesome about this is you could go into the settings here and you could change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, but you can also turn on professional thermometry. And when you go into there and you go back to the screen, you have all these different things here that you could choose from on the side. You have point, line, frame, and scale. And you could do three of each of these on the display and it will show you different temperatures. For example, you could select three different points if you select point and it will show you the temperature of all three of those points in the upper left hand corner. You could select line and you could draw three lines and it will show you the hottest and coldest temperature on each one of those three lines. And then you could select frame, you could draw three squares and it will show you the hottest and coldest points in each one of those squares. And then you also have a scale on the side that you can lower for your max temperature or raise from your minimum temperature and it will only sense things within that temperature if that makes sense. But you can see here on the screen there are tons and tons of readings here. And what's awesome is you could take a photo of that reading or you could switch over and take a video of those readings. So if you had a customer that you needed to show different temperature differences or things like that, you can go ahead and record it really easily. But what's awesome is it saves to the app on here, then you could go ahead and transport it directly to the camera roll on your phone. You could send it as a text, as an email, whatever you wanna do, really, really easy to do. But tons of features there in that professional mode. Now in this clip, it's pretty cool because I have it on white hot and you could see everywhere on the ceiling in my living room where there's a roof truss because the trusses were a little bit hotter than the rest of the area because the area between the trusses was insulated. So that was pretty cool to see that the heat was dissipating down through those roof trusses. And in this clip, it was later in the evening, I was checking out the outside of my house and you could see up in the top dormers, up in the top peaks of the two dormers on the back of the house, which was in the shade was pretty hot. You could see they're red and the side of the house was all red because that's the side that the sun was still shining on and it was around 100 degrees on that side. So pretty neat to see. We're gonna, 
as I come over here, you can see the garage roof is hot because the sun is still shining on it, as well as the side of the garage there and the side of the neighbor's garage. And then the gazebo in my backyard, you can see where the concrete is warm until it gets underneath that gazebo and then it starts to cool down because that gazebo kept that concrete nice and cool when the sun was back there. Another thing that I thought was interesting is I have an extension cord plugged in in my basement going into the old half of my basement running a dehumidifier. And you could see coming out of the outlet how the extension cord was getting hot on the ends. And then I had it curled up behind my furnace and you could see that the extension cord was glowing red because it was sensing that it was a little bit warmer than the rest of the stuff around it which I thought was pretty neat. So you could use this as a safety device to see what things are heating up if your extension cords are heating up too hot because you're not really supposed to use extension cords long term to keep stuff plugged in. You could use this thing in your circuit panel in your house to see what's getting hot and you can also use it in the automotive industry if you're trying to sense if you have a phantom power draw which my wife did on her CRV and I was able to fix it, it was the alternator, but I would have been able to put this thing on the fuse box and see if there were any fuses or capacitors getting hot, which would possibly help diagnose a phantom power draw. And you can also use this thing on exhaust manifolds to see which cylinder's burning hotter and which one's colder. So if you had a problem with your engine, you may be able to narrow it down to which cylinder it's coming from. So very, very many ways to use this thing. I, when I took it to work, I let a few different people play around with it there. And one guy, he was actually looking at flares before and thermal cameras, but he never really wanted to pay the price of them. And he said that they weren't really that great and he wasn't really that happy with them. So he never bought one. But then after trying this, he was like, oh my God, that thing's amazing. How much is it? And uh, he was really impressed with the frame rate of it, how smooth everything was and actually the quality of the picture. So you can see here, this thing can be used for multiple different things. It's awesome. And I, I feel like it's almost a toy rather than a tool because I've been using it because it's so much fun just going around seeing what different temperatures things are and how different things are displayed. Obviously I will use it as a tool when I need it. And it's gonna show you a lot of different things. But let me know what you guys thought. Let me know if you've ever used one of these thermal imaging cameras, if you had one, what you would use it for, please let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, like I said, I'll leave links down below where you can purchase one. And if you found this video interesting and helpful, please consider subscribing and sticking around to see more. See you on the next one.